Hi guys and welcome! Also, oh, you want to know about the exact values of circular functions? Well, don't tell anyone. No, actually tell everyone. You found the right place. I'm the Masked Guru, otherwise known as Darren. Welcome to my channel and this video today. Now, being all needy, uh, if you are watching this video and have friends, uh, well done, congratulations. I don't. I spend all my life here talking to a camera, but that's okay. Who needs friends? <sighs> If you have friends, can you do me a favor and circulate this link and let them know? I know it's cheesy, Instagram it, Facebook, do what you need to do, but it would be really good to have some people subscribe to my channel. What do you mean subscribe to your channel? Of course you can do that. There's a little doohickey over there in the corner that is highlighting now. Um, show the love. Uh, no, don't show me love because that's probably illegal. But uh, yeah, show me some love and uh, click that little button. Um, greatly appreciated. Now, what are these exact values of circular functions? It builds very much on what I've been dealing with for the whole range of videos for this series. And that's the unit circle. And circular functions, which I have to say, I love, 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 love. Now, why do I love, 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 love it? Because uh, I hated, hated, hated it at school. Did not understand a word of it. In fact, it was only when I started teaching that finally that little penny dropped. And you're going to go, but you were old when you started teaching. Uh, how are you expecting me to understand this now? Good question. And I hated maths at school, which whole new discussion. But the point of it is, uh, we're going to spend the lesson uh, covering the stuff above me. I don't know which side I'm on at the moment. So let's say uh, dealing with exact values and how to find the common angles of 30, 45 and 60 degrees. Know how to construct triangles that can help you and know how to apply the theory to some questions. That obviously why we are here to be able to understand the theory. Now, you've met exact values before. And generally speaking, in year 9 or year 10, or maybe earlier if you were lucky, you had these ideas where we could express answers as the square root of 3 or 4 pi. This just made it nicer than having to express answers in decimal places. And there were lots of questions in Pythagoras and trigonometry where actually expressing answers in terms of pi or values or even the quadratics uh, in terms of a square root sign or a third meant that we could actually not suffer from rounding errors. Now, exact values actually apply with uh, trigonometry, uh, believe it or not. And uh, we're going to use this very common uh, little item called a right angle triangle. In fact, we're going to use two right angle triangles. But before we go any further, I need you to know two important pieces of information. And I can't really remember the first time I learned these. But once you know that the sine of 30 degrees is a half and the tan of 45 degrees is one, you are set for life. You need to remember those two things. Now, back in my tortured school career, and I hated school with a passion, um, and there is all sorts of stuff about that on my website, uh, which I believe is going to come up in a little box uh, above. Um, but uh, we, I had a teacher, Mr. Swift and Mr. Curd, who, who literally just put, I think, the hardest way to learn anything on the board. I, I just... I swear to you, they just was like, mm, how do we confuse people? This was physics, not even maths. But I'm going to show you the easy way. And we're going to start with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two triangles. This one here and this one here. Now, they look identical. But you've got to imagine that they're not. Now, one of them, basically, the side lengths here are exactly the same. Now, if the side lengths there are exactly the same, and that angle there is for uh, 90 degrees, then hopefully we're all happy that that's going to be 45 degrees, and that's going to be 45 degrees. Now, the other triangle I'm going to draw has 30 degrees here and 60 degrees here. Now, piece of advice. This one, this triangle here is really easy to remember. Lots of people say to me, oh, how do you know where the 30 goes and where the 60 goes? And actually, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't actually matter, so long as you remember that the sine of 30 degrees is a half. And I'm going to tell you why. Going back to Sokatoa, if we have Sokatoa, then we realize that So is silly old Harry, otherwise known as that sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. If I know that the sine of 30 degrees, let's put a 3 in there just to be cheeky, if I know that sine of 30 degrees is half, I know that the opposite is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. So here is my 30 degrees. The opposite is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. Well, I can now find this missing side length here by using, I hear with you shout, yes, Pythagoras theorem. And using Pythagoras theorem, I know that 2 squared is equal to 1 squared plus x squared. I'm not going to label the x for the moment, but we know where it is. So 4 is equal to 1 plus x squared. 
3 is equal to x squared or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Now in this instance the minus makes no sense because yeah we can't have a negative distance. So ladies and gentlemen there is a root 3 and I now see a third. I now see a square root sign and this is where my exact values come from in just a moment. Going to this triangle here moving it up slightly so my head doesn't get in the way. What was the other identity I told you you needed to know? It was the tan of 45 is equal to 1. More importantly, I'm going to write that the tan of 45 degrees is 1 over 1. Now remember, any whole number can be turned into a fraction by dividing by 1. But why is that important to me? Because I know tan is toa, toa, ti, o, a, which is opposite over adjacent. So, oh, choose a 45 degrees, and you're going to say, oh, do I do which one, which one, which one? And I'm going to say to it, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> because when I choose the opposite of 1, over the adjacent of 1, it doesn't matter which of those 45s you use, that's what you end up with. And again, I'm going to use trigonometry, uh, sorry, no, I'm not going to use Pythag. Did you know he was possibly a murderer? No, there's a video. It's great. Anyway, uh, so now I'm going to say that x squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 2. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, there are lots of other ways of remembering these. Uh, this is the one I tend to like. And you're going to say, well, how do we actually use it? Well, um, just by using Sokotoa. Sokotoa. So, ka, toa. So, the most common angles I ever need to know are 30, 60, and 45 degrees. That is on top of 0, 90, 182, 73, 60, but we've already done that in a previous video. So, let's go back and rub this out, and let's say, right, we want the sine of 30, the cosine of 30, or the tan of 30 degrees. Well, if I want the sine of 30, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, find my 30 degrees, here it is, opposite over hypotenuse, just reading off that triangle gives me a half. What about the cosine of 30? Well, the cosine of 30 is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, which is root 3 on 2. And the tan of 30 is trawling opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. And there, using that one triangle, I have, bang, 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 come up with my three uh, angles in exact form. So wherever I see now sine 30, I can put a half. Wherever I see cosine of 30, I can put root 3 upon 2. What about this one? Uh, let's do the sine of 60. The cosine of 60 and the tan of 60 degrees. Right, so using 60 degrees now, there's 60 degrees. Right, silly. Old Harry, root 3 on 2. What about the cosine of 60? Caught a herring. And the tan of 60, trawling off America is root 3 on 1, and hopefully you're all happy that I can just write that as root 3. Again, those are my exact values. And we may as well finish this off. So what about the tan? Uh, sorry, try again. What about the sine of 45, the cosine of 45, and the tan of 45 degrees? Well, the tan of 45 I already know is 1. That's one of the ones I remembered. But the sine of 45, and the great thing is I can use any of these 45 degrees. So silly, old Harry. So 1 over root 2. That is a root 2. That looks terrible. Try that again. Or is root 2. What about the cosine of 40 degree? Caught a herring is also 1 over root 2. Whoa! And the tan of 45 is, in fact, 1. Now, again, we can combine these with all the other angles that we've worked previously with the unit circle. And what a beautiful segue to talk about the unit circle. So the question is... We can now combine that with the work I did on the previous video. I know, it was 30 minutes long. God, tell me about it. And I'm recording these things back to back. <laughs> uh, so I want to evaluate the cos of 150 degrees. Right, so here we go. So the cosine of 150 degrees. So it's in degrees, so we're going to do 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Now, our, my advice to you is always draw a sketch. How quickly you draw it, how big it is, doesn't really matter. I'm drawing it big because we need to be able to see it. Right, 150 degrees puts me here. There is 150 degrees, which gives me that angle there as 30 degrees. Now, there is the angle I'm looking for. Remember, I'm always looking for the angle between the line and the horizontal. Why? Because I can now use the idea that I can find the cosine of 30 degrees to help me find the cosine of 150. Well, I've worked out the cosine of 30 degrees. Bang, bang, bang. There's my 30 degrees. Silly old 
Harry, that made that route three then. So cos of 30 is caught a herring. Caught a herring, which is route three on two. Now that's a cosine of 30, but we're looking for the cosine of 150. So we need to look at what quadrant is it in. All stations is in the sine quadrant, which means that only my sine values are positive, my cosine values are negative. So in which case the cosine of 150 degrees is the minus of root three on two. Do you see the power of this? Now, if you're looking at that going, what the flipping heck are you talking about? Again, practice, this stuff is amazing. What about evaluate the sine of 690 degrees? 690 degrees? You're having a laugh. Well, the problem is my triangle, that's not a triangle, my circle only goes up to 360 degrees. So what do we do here, maths guru? Well, we realize there's a bit of a trick here. Now obviously for every 360 degrees, we're ending up back at the beginning. So what I have to do is work out how many 360 degrees are there in 690, as in if I was gonna go 690 degrees around that circle, how many times would I actually go around? Well, that's zero, two, six, 720. So 720 degrees would take me all the way around. So it's not quite 720. So it's 30 degrees before I get all the way around again. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, there is my 30 degrees. So 720, sorry, 690 degrees puts me there just before I get around the second time at 720 degrees. See what I'm doing there? So if I now know that this is 30 degrees connected to the x-axis, I now know that my reference angle in this quadrant is 30 degrees. So if I can find the sine of 30 degrees, I can find the sine of 690 degrees. Well, I know the sine of 30 degrees is a half. It's one of those ones I just remember. And so the sine of 690 degrees is, what do I need to know? What quadrant is it in? And what is positive? So all stations to Canberra, Cos is the only thing that is positive, and so sine must be negative, in which case it becomes minus a half. And let's just throw in one here with a bit of radians, because, you know, we need to. Right, here we go. So, here is my circle. And again, of all the students I have ever taught in life, most of them find this complicated because they have the fractions, not because of the unit circle. So 5 pi on 3. Mm, that's interesting. What does that mean? Well, sine, we can come to in a moment. 2 pi on 1 is equal to 6 pi on 3. Now, why would I be interested in this? Because I'm interested in knowing how many thirds make up a full circle. And you're going to say, why did I choose thirds? Well, because the bottom of that bracket is, uh, the bottom of that fraction is actually a third. So I know that 2 pi can be expressed as 6 pi on 3. Well, now that makes life a little bit easier because 5 pi on 3 must be here. And this distance here must be pi on three. Yeah, because five pi on three plus pi on three would give me six pi on three. So we now know this distance all the way around here is five pi on three. But I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in that distance between my line and my x-axis. Why? Because that gives me my reference angle here. So if I find the sine of pi on three, and what's pi on three? 180 divided by three is 60 degrees. So I'm looking for the sine of 60 degrees. Quick triangle, there's my 60, there is my 30, one, two, and root three, because sine of 30 is a half. So the sine of 60, silly, old Harry, is equal to root three on two. So the sine of 60 is root three on two. So what would be the sine of five pi on three? Well, all I need to know now is which quadrant this is in. All stations to Canberra. It's in the cosine one again. So cosine is the only thing that's positive. So I now know that the sine of five pi on three is equal to the negative of the sine of pi on three, which just so happens to be minus root three on two. Now you'll notice I chose to write degrees here. In an exam, just be careful with that, all right? I tend to work in degrees in my head. It just makes life a little bit easier. But do you know what? That, ladies and gentlemen, calls it a day for exact values of circular functions. Ah, oh, as is always, I get to the end of these videos and I hope that my seven subscribers in Hull are still watching. Well, if you are, I thank you. Much respect to all of you. Keep following. Spread the word. If you haven't already subscribed, I'm going to ask one more time. Do me the favor and click that little subscribe button. 
Otherwise, there's a video at the end there that you can continue watching for revision purposes or just fun to see what I talk about next. It is always a pleasure. Take care. I'll see you again. Maths Guru out.